Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Now this is another video on the O-level biology syllabus. And this is the paper 2-2 which has just been requested by one of you. And uh, I was always, I was intending to do it, do it. This was in one of my lists. So it is the section A explained of the paper 2-2. As you all know, the time for it is 1 hour 45 minutes. And the marks for it are a total 80 marks. As you all know in the section A, you have to answer all the questions in this section and you write your answers in the spaces provided. Now let's begin at the first question. The diagram shows the teeth in the lower jaw of a human. Name the type of tooth labeled X and describe one function of this type. So if it is one and you've written uh, two or three, uh, the examiner will only read the first one because maybe the first one is right and the other two are wrong or maybe the first one is wrong and then the second one is right. So please be careful when they say one function. If it had just said describe the function, then it was okay. But it says one function, so be, be careful to read uh, the correct one. So the type of tooth, as you all know, this is the incise, uh, this is the canine. So these uh, front four ones are the incisors. Just a quick revision. Incisors, and then this is the canine. So this one is the canine, and this one is the canine. Uh, and the spelling should be right, C-A-N-I-N-E, -N -E. and that is, of course, underlined. Function of it is, of course, tearing, and, uh, or you could have said ripping. Don't think, think this word is very this thing, but still, or piercing was also correct. So tearing, ripping, or piercing, of course, chewing is something which you all must have written, but that is not correct. Because when you chew something, like you chew gum, chewing gum, you have it in your mouth, you can have it for hours in your mouth, and uh, that would not uh, break it up into pieces. So chewing is a word which you please do not use uh, ever in your uh, anything about the teeth. So chewing is not a word which is allowed. I, I tell you that when I even in my video on this is that you can chew gum for a whole day and yet it will remain the same. Then let's read the question B part. Food can be sweetened by using honey or sugar. The graph shows how the pH of saliva in the mouth changes with time after eating food sweetened with honey or sugar. So you've got two graphs. And uh, let's look at it on the x-axis. We have time after eating and minutes. And then the pH of the saliva. So at zero minutes and then five minutes and then 10 minutes, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and 40. So we've got honey, which is in this color. Honey, the pH is decreasing, then it stays constant, then the pH is increasing, and then it remains pH 7. So as we ate, as we ate honey, or we had honey, or we put it on a slice of bread and ate it, so the pH fell down in the first five minutes. Then it remained constant for the next five minutes and then it started increasing and by the time it was 25 minutes, it then remains constant after that. But then let's look at another one. Let's look at the sugar one. So this is the line for the sugar one. Now, if you look at the sugar one, it decreases a lot. It decreases more. In the first five minutes, that also decreases, but it decreases to a pH of 3.5 somewhere here. And then it increases. And then it doesn't remain, because here it was constant, this didn't remain constant. And then it keeps on increasing. And then it reaches the same point after 40 minutes. So this is the comparison you're supposed to do. Here there is a constant in this situation, in this there is no constant. There is a one in which it remains, the pH remains constant between five and 10 minutes, and here it does not remain constant. So look at the graph, look at it carefully. Then the increase is between, in, in sugar, the increase is from 5 minutes and it increases till 40 minutes. While in the honey thing, it increases from, say, 10 minutes to here, to 25 minutes. So it increases from 10 minutes to 25 minutes, and then it remains constant. But then the Sugar does not ever become constant. We do not see a constant in the sugar. Then let's start doing the questions on this. Number one, 
state the lowest pH of saliva in the mouth after eating food sweetened with honey. Okay, let's look at the honey part. So the honey part, the lesser is at this point. Now, what is this point? It's four point, well, this would be 4.5, then 4.5. 4.5, 4.6, 4.7, 4 and 4.75. So 4.0, point, point, you have to put a point here and 7.5. So 4.75 got you one mark. Then it says it takes more time for saliva to return to pH 7 after eating food sweetened with sugar than after eating food sweetened, sweetened with honey. State how much more time it takes for the pH to return to pH 7. You can see uh, it took 25 to reach pH 7 in the case of honey. But sugar, it happened on at 40. So 40 minus 25 is equal to 15. But I mean, 15 was easy to calculate, but where would you have lost the marks? I'm sure you would have lost the marks here. There are two marks for this, and you wonder why the two marks, one for the working, no, I didn't say the working part. So you would have written 15, but you would not have written the units. So please remember, that is a last minute check I ask you all to do just before you give in the paper. Your last 10 minutes should be for rechecking. And the one important thing which you recheck is, have you written the units in every question where the units were required? So the two marks were for what? Were for this, one was for 15, one mark for this, and one mark for the units, which is the minutes, or you could have written even in short MIM. Then the C part of the question, dental decay is likely to occur when the pH of saliva falls below 5.5. Use information from the graph to explain whether sweetening food with honey or with sugar is more likely to lead to dental decay. From the graph, you can see that 5.5 uh, was the cutoff point which they are talking about. And when did it remain more? 5.5. Sugar was low for a very long time. pH was less than 5.5 for nearly more than, I would say, what? Between 32 minutes or 35 minutes. Because it's about 32. It was from here to here. It has remained low. While with honey, it remained low only for, say, 10, 15 minutes. So you had to really be talking about this. That question was, uh, dental decay is likely to occur when the pH falls below 5.5. Use information from the graph to explain whether sweetening food with honey or with sugar is more likely. Naturally, it has to be sugar. Why sugar? Why sugar would lead to dental decay? is because it's a more acidic or a lower pH. Results in more acidic or a lower pH and for a longer time. For a longer time. So you have to understand is that longer time, anything between 25 and 35 minutes was allowed. So it remains more acidic for a longer time. So two, so coming back to the graph, you can see this how then sugar, it has remained less than 5.5 for a very long time, from here to here. While for the honey, it has only remained low in this point, in this area. Then state two ways to prevent uh, dental decay. Now that's of course something we do in the syllabus, brushing uh, or cleaning, or you can say, you can say a whole lot of stuff, cleaning or using toothpaste even was allowed. So brushing with toothpaste was one mark. And then flossing or using a mouthwash was a second mark. Flossing, using an alkaline mouthwash, why well, you could have said that, they got you another mark. And then using fluoride toothpaste, fluoride toothpaste uh, could have got you another mark. I'm giving you all the points, but you had to only give me two. Uh, then avoid sugary foods, Avoid sugary foods, got you another mark, and then use honey rather than sugar. Use honey rather than sugar. 
So any of these points, brushing, flossing, fluoride, toothpaste, any two of these, you got you your two out of two. So the third part of the question, a person with dental decay may also have gums that bleed. This makes it more likely that bacteria found in the mouth will enter the circulatory system. Bacteria in the circulatory system can cause the blood to clot. Small blood clots may move through the circulatory system to line to, uh, sorry, uh, system to the coronary arteries. Suggest and explain possible health problems that this may cause. Naturally, we're talking of coronary heart disease. That's part of the syllabus. So it's going to result in a heart attack, uh, less ability of the heart to contract or pump blood, less blood to the body tissues, less oxygen and less glucose reaching the body tissues. So less um, aerobic respiration, lactic acid will develop. And of course, this will uh, have less ability to carry out any physical activity. So basically all the points which we need for, you know, how the coronary arteries could be blocked and what could be the effect on that of the whole body. So I've just worded it for you all, heart attack, less ability of the heart to contract, less blood to body tissues, less glucose and oxygen reaching the body, less aerobic respiration, anaerobic respiration may result in lactic acid being formed. And of course that would result in fatigue. And this will, of course, be there will be less ability to carry out any physical activity. Now, coming to question number two, the, uh, the diagram shows the arrangement of major blood vessels in the human circulatory system. Arrow shows the direction that blood moves in each vessel. And you have all these. So it says, OK, head and arms, A, B, G, C, D, E, F. And then, of course, let's look at the question. The question is, Complete the table by writing uh, seven of the blood vessels have been labeled on the diagram using the letters A to G. Complete the table by writing one letter A to G for each name or description of a blood vessel. The first row has been completed for you. The aorta is B. Okay, the aorta is B. How did we figure that out? Now let's look at it again. So I'm just going to revise this with you all. This will be the right atrium. This will be the right ventricle. This will be the left atrium. And this will be the left ventricle. Now out of the left ventricle comes out this and this B is the aorta. Is everybody clear on that? Then you see this blood flowing into this, into the right atrium. You know that that is the vena cava. And then you know the ones coming out of the uh, right ventricle. Now this vessel here coming out and going here to the lungs is what? Is the pulmonary artery is the pulmonary artery because the artery is the one which is carrying blood away from the heart a artery a away and it is carrying deoxygenated blood we know that but please do not think always artery this is the only exception to the rule so artery is carrying so this is the pulmonary artery and then from the lungs it is returning to the left atrium so this has to be the pulmonary vein so this has to be the pulmonary vein. Then as the blood comes out of the aorta, now this of course is the very interesting, I always ask you all to be very clear on this. So then we have this vessel which is going, so this vessel now coming down here, this is the aorta coming down here. So this is the entire aorta which is shown to you. So now going to the liver, this has to be the hepatic artery. This has to be going to the liver, has to be the hepatic artery. And then going out of it, and this of course is the vena cava, which is this side. This entire thing would be the vena cava. So this coming out of the liver and going like this would be the hepatic vein. And then of course this one connecting the small intestine, this one connecting the small intestine to the liver has to be the hepatic portal vein has to be the hepatic portal vein, hepatic portal vein. Then the one which is going to the kidney, the one which is going to the kidney from the aorta because this side is the aorta. So this has to be, there's no kidney artery, it's called the renal artery. We were asked to do this in the syllabus, renal artery. And the one coming out of it, out of the kidneys, so any organ, the vessel going to it is an artery. And the coming out of it is the vein. So renal vein. And then of course the aorta comes here, goes to the lower legs in the body. And then, then of course it all comes out. And there'll be the veins which will go into the vena cava. 
So looking at this, I've of course done this, it carries blood containing the lowest concentration of urea. Now the lowest concentration of urea has to be E. Why has it got to be E? Because in the kidney that urea is filtered, so there is some urea still left. All of it does not filter out. In fact, some of it just goes back into the blood. But it will come again and then it will be filtered out. So what you have to understand is that the renal vein, so that is why the kidney, the renal artery entering would have the highest amount of urea. So more urea here and less urea here. Right? Then the next question was one vessel that carries oxygenated blood. Now, oxygenated blood could be any. Aorta is oxygenated blood. A, B. It could have been A, B, or C. So, why is it A, B, and C? Because A is the aorta, B is the, sorry, B is the aorta, A is the pulmonary vein. And why C? Because it's the hepatic artery which is arising from the aorta. So, it could have been A, B, or C. I'm not saying you have to write all of them then carries blood at the highest pressure has to be the aorta because the left ventricle is very thick. The left ventricle wall is very thick and that pumps the blood with a lot of force into the aorta. So the aorta has the highest pressure in the body actually. And carries blood containing the highest concentration of glucose. Now highest concentration of glucose. Glucose comes in because when you have some rice or you have some bread and that is when it's digested so what are we saying? We are saying it could be either be D when the from the intestine it is entering the liver or it could be F because it will leave in the hepatic vein and will enter the vena cava and then will enter the general circulation of the body and of course the entire blood glucose will rise. So first whatever you eat in bread, rice, small intestine, digested, absorbed, enters the blood. Hepatic portal vein carries it to the liver. So it's got to be the glucose. You can't get it from the air. You have to get it from your food. You had some uh, cake. You had some pastry. You had some ice cream. So all that will enter. It will be D or F. Then coming on to the hepatic, uh, hepatic vein. Which one is the hepatic vein? The hepatic vein is the one which is leaving the liver. So it has to be here. Hepatic vein has to be F. And then the artery that carries deoxygenated blood. Now in all the labeling, you know it has to be G. Deoxygenated blood, the other was not labeled. Deoxygenated blood is the pulmonary artery which is carrying the deoxygenated blood. So please understand that why these were all the labels and this was a little difficult for you all. But if you know it very well, I'm sure you can do it. I'll just revise it with you once again. So quick revision again. Right atrium, right ventricle. Left atrium, left ventricle. Then the left ventricle, out comes the aorta. So B is the aorta. B is the aorta, right? And the aorta comes down, goes up, and goes down. So it will go to the head and the arms. The, 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 these are called, of course, the head and the arm arteries. And then these will be the head and the arm veins, which will come down. And veins from the lower part of the body are coming down. So this would be the superior vena cava. This would be the inferior vena cava. And all these vena cavas will enter the right atrium. Then the blood will go into the right ventricle. And then from the right ventricle, from the right ventricle, out comes this major blood vessel, which is, of course, the pulmonary is coming out from here. See, it's coming out from here, right ventricle is coming out here and is going to the lungs. And this would be the pulmonary artery, A artery, A away from the heart. And then the one, the vessel which is bringing blood from there, this would be the pulmonary vein, which is bringing blood to the back to the left atrium where it's going to be pumped with a lot of force because the left ventricle wall is very thick. So the left ventricle wall is very thick and out comes out will be the aorta. And from the aorta arises this vessel which is called the liver, hepa, hepa, hepa is a word, a Latin word, hepa for liver, hepatic artery, then hepatic vein which will enter the vena cavas. Then there will be an intestinal artery which will go to the small intestine which will also arise from the aorta. 
and then this is the famous one which is the hepatic portal vein so d is the hepatic portal vein everybody must know that and i'm sure if you revise the digestion chapter you can just go through this once again then as this is coming down then we getting a vessel to the kidneys this has to be the renal artery renal artery and the renal artery then this has got to be the renal vein because it's going out of it so this will be the renal vein which has less urea in it because what do the kidney do the kidney filters the urea out of the blood the kidney filters the urine out of the uh, sorry the urea out of the blood the kidney filters the urea out of the blood and then of course the artery which is going to the body to the legs and then the vein which comes out so the simplest uh, b part explain why the movement of blood through the circulatory system of human is described as a double circulation it means blood passes through the heart twice why because we have a four chambered heart so it first comes here then goes down here then it goes to the lungs and then it comes back here and then it again goes to the entire body and then it returns to the heart so blood to the lungs and then blood to the body and that is called a double circulation three points three marking scheme points a total of 9 marks this question carried then coming to question number 3 the diagram shows an elm tree uh elm tree is may be infected by a fungus that causes a disease state two characteristics of a fungus what are the characteristics of a fungus naturally it's got hyphae or mycelium and then there are they are decomposers or they are saprophytes you could have said that if you knew that word they are decomposers or they are saprophytes uh, and then they have spores and they actually develop a layer around it which is called a spore and then they have a cell wall made of chitin some of you say chitin it's chitin made of uh, chitin and uh, they also have uh, a nucleus or they are multinucleated so you could have said that as well so any two out of these i got your two the fungus moves through an infected tree inside the xylem vessels the tree responds to stop the movement of the fungus by producing substances that block the xylem vessels this causes the leaves of the tree to wilt and to become yellow explain how the response of the tree to infection leads to these symptoms of the disease interesting now the mark scheme is very clear about it that you're going to talk about the blockage of the xylem vessels so the xylem vessels are blocked so there will be no water transported or less water transported because maybe some are blocked some aren't maybe only 50% are blocked so water loss will be greater than the water uptake because the leaves are there and they're still losing water their stomata are open so they're losing water so loss of water is greater than the water uptake the less water will remain in the cell so less uh, they will become less turgid so loss of turgor or they become flaccid or they become plasmolized so and the other thing is that magnesium levels will decrease because magnesium was being transported through the xylem so less magnesium means less chlorophyll or no chlorophyll was also allowed so this is how you would look at this question and this is how you try to answer it because you want to think of xylems getting blocked so xylem block means no water and ions being transported to the upper parts of the aerial parts of the plant of course it's in the soil but the xylem is blocked then c part of the question an insect called the elm bark beetle is the vector of this disease describe what is meant by the term vector now what is a vector vector is transfers pathogens or carries patho pathogens like we have malaria female anopheles mosquito is a vector of malaria so transfers pathogen i like the i love the word pathogen transfer carries spreads pathogen or the fungus or the parasite from one organism to another one organism to another so the beetle carries it to this tree so two marks or you could have said is itself not affected the beetle itself is not affected right then d part of the question elm trees can reproduce when the roots from one parent tree spreads out near the surface of the soil this is shown in the diagram below you can see how the roots are spreading and how there are new little trees coming out roots of parent tree grow stem called suckers each sucker forms a new tree name the type of reproduction was very simple everybody knew that i'm sure 
asexual reproduction there are no sexes involved they're just the there's no male female there are no gametes then it says suggest why this type of reproduction makes it difficult to control the spread of the disease caused by the fungus very simple the answer is that they're all so close together and they can you know the beaches are going to have a party time living off all these uh, trees so close together they're connected and they're genetically identical so there's no sources there's no question that there's a variation and some are immune or some develop some sort of antibodies against it or some can protect themselves so they're all the main thing you've got to understand is that they're very close and they're connected by these these, these xylem all these are connected the roots are all connected and uh, genetic so one can spread to the other the fungus can pass from one tree to the other tree and of course the fact that they're genetically identical or if you said they're clones that all makes it all very very susceptible to diseases okay i'm going to finish this video here and we'll continue in the next video the rest of the paper so best of luck and uh, wish you all the very best